Till now, we have seen how we can design web services using RESTful web services with Spring Boot with lots of different libraries. In this video, we are going to see how to create a Spring Boot application with SOAP web services. Spring Boot supports creation of web services using SOAP request. We are going to use Spring Boot to create that now. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. As usual, I am in the start.spring.io. Using the Spring Initializer, let's create a Spring Boot application. So let's have the group ID as com tech primers. Let's have the artifact as Spring Boot Soap example. And I'm going to use the version 1.5.10 of Spring Boot. And the dependency which we require for creating the SOAP web services are SOAP web services. So there is a starter for specifically creating web services using SOAP. We are going to use that. So if you type SOAP, you can notice there is something called web services which come with contract for SOAP service development with Spring web services. If you generally type web, you can see even the uh, Spring MVZ which comes with the REST by default. But we are going to use SOAP in our case. So that's why we created the web services. So that's it. I'm just clicking the generate option. Let me unzip this project and open it in IntelliJ. I'll just fast forward that. So the project is opened in IntelliJ. If I go to the pom.xml, if you see here, we can notice the Spring Boot Starter Web Services dependency. This is going to bring in the SOAP services and the relevant libraries which are required for creating the SOAP web services. Additional to the Spring Boot Starter Web Services, we need to add the WSDL dependency. There is something called WSDL 4J. So WSDL is nothing but Web Services Descriptive Language. If you are using the SOAP request, you know that you will be creating a WSDL for every request. Something similar to the JSON, we will be creating a WSDL in the SOAP request. So we need to add a dependency for that. So I'm just going to use WSDL 4J. And let me do an import. This is already defined in the Spring Boot application, in the Spring Boot dependencies, but we just need it in our application. So we are just defining it in our project so that Spring Boot can bring it to us. The next major thing is creation of the WSDL. So we can use our XSD to create this uh, uh, model. So I'm going to use the XSD file to create a schema. So we need to create an XML schema in order to get a request, right? I'm just going to use the users example. So I'll create a users.xsd. So this users.xsd is going to have the schema definition for our request. So as you know, you can uh, do a XML access schema and the schema all, uh, by default comes up. Now we need to use the XML, XML namespace for our project. So I'll just assign the namespace as uh, let's say HTTP colon tech primers dot com slash what is the example spring hyphen it is spring hyphen boot or I'll just say spring hyphen boot hyphen soap hyphen example right so that is the uh, so that is the namespace which we have and let's create the target namespace with the same name and additional to that we just need to define the uh, element form i'll just say element form default equal to qualified So inside this, we are going to have the schema. Additionally, uh, what else do we have? We don't have to. So we need to create the elements inside the schema now. So let's create the elements. So I'll just say access colon element. The first element in the list is the first element name in the list would be 
let's say we want to get some uh, user information so i'll just say get user request and it's a request right so we let's name it that way because in soap we used to do it that way where we define the type of request or whether it is a response in the name of the element so that's what we have done here under the element we need to uh, create the type the the it's called complex type so we'll create the complex type what do we need to pass we need to pass a, a name right we need to pass a name to the user list so i'll do a sequence so inside the sequence i need to now pass a element and the name is name i'll pass that as a name and uh, what is the type of this object? I'll just say XS colon string. So this is a type of object string. So I'm just going to say string. So that's it, right? So I don't need anything else. So I'm just going to use the name to the request. So I'm providing a name. So, so let's provide a name to the get user request so that we can retrieve the users from the web service. Similar to the request, we need to create a response. So I'll just name it as get uh, user response. And in the response, instead of the name object, we will be providing a user object, right? Let's create this object. <coughs> so we need to create a complex type in order to provide that. And let's give the name as user so this is the same which is getting referenced here so we are creating a user with different elements so we need to provide the user with the name the name would be string so what else the user will have the user can have an employee id so i'll just say emp id and that is going to be an integer so i'll just mark it as int and we need to have a salary of the employee and i'll just mark it as double so these are different um, variables which are under the user so i will have a user model so this gets converted into a model that's what we are going to create next we need to convert this xst into a java code or a model or even a pojo which can be used inside the java code so why is this creating an issue i think we named it uh, incorrectly okay so we need to define this as xs right so we created the xml namespace but we need to just map it to the xs so i think we are good here right the schema is created now so this is the schema now we need to convert the schema definition into the java pojo so we have already have defined the namespace as com tech primer spring boot soap application soap example so let's go to the pom and use the jaxb plugin to convert this xst into a java code so I have already created a, a live template to create this code. So if you notice here, uh, the code is automatically generated. So what I am doing is I have defined the schema directory as SRC main resources, which is where our schema resides. And I am instructing it to add it to the output directory SRC main Java. So you can even redirect it to target um, generated hyphen sources. We can do that as well. We just need to define it but for now what i will do is i'll ju i just needed it to be generated right so i'll just uh, generate it on the fly now uh, let me check if i have java 8 i'll use java 8 and let's run the maven clean install as a part of maven clean install this is going to generate our pojos from the users xsd we will be getting the user request get user request get user response and the user pojos and then we can work on them So if you see here, the packages got created. Yeah, the only thing is I think since I had mentioned hyphen in the schema definition namespace, it is just added an uh, underscore here. But yeah, you can just correct that. 
later right we can just even correct it here so you can just correct that later but for now i'm just not going to correct it uh, we'll just reuse it from that so let's try now uh, creating our main code so before going into the um, main code we need to add some data so we need to store some data in in a memory right so what i will do is i'll just uh, create a package so let's create a service i'll just create a service inside the service i'll just store the information of users we are not going to use any database here uh, as such i'll just say user service inside this user service we will just hard code some values inside the um, hash map or something this is a service so i'll just annotate it with a service and i'll just add a post construct so that this particular method will be called once the spring boot application is up i'll just say initialize here we can populate the data i'll just create a public sort of final hash map i'll just create a hash map which has list of users so we are going to populate this particular hash map and when we retrieve it we are going to retrieve from this so the service is going to act as a bridge let's put some values here we need a key and a value right in order to do that we will create a user uh, let's call the user peter we need to set the name as peter we need to set the employee id i'll just set the employee id as uh, 1111 i'll set the salary as some double number right so i'll just say 12000 and let's put peter dot get name into peter same way i'll create some three more users called sam and ryan So we have the objects populated here as a part of our uh, initialization and we need to provide a service with which you can get the user right so we'll do a get users yeah and instead of the string here we'll just return only the user we'll do dot get user get so let's provide a name so we should provide the name because that is what we designed in the uh, xml schema right we have the request with just the name so the user will provide the name and we will retrieve the object using the name so that is the reason we created the hash map with the key as the name and the value as the object so since we have the key as a string we don't have to override the hash map or hash code or equals so we should be good there so we have the service ready um, now we can create the actual endpoint with which will be hitting I'll just call it as user endpoint we need to annotate it with at endpoint similar to how we used to do it with at risk controller in the uh, spring web or spring MVC framework we are going to use at endpoint so this is coming specifically from the spring web services now we can auto wire the service which we created uh, user service because we will be using this service to get the data so get user request is the request which will be triggered by the user and under that we will be doing a get user and we will be providing a name to it and this is what we will be returning right in fact we will be writing what uh, we will be getting a user object so we'll be getting a user object we need to create a response now get user response so let's create this response object and we need to set the user in the response because that is what we have done here right in the if you see in the users.xst the response object has the user object that's it so we don't have anything else in that object 
so let's set the response dot set user of this particular we can directly even set the service and let's return this response so this uh, function needs to be defined as public get response get user response right and what do we need to annotate it with to identify it as a, a soap request payload we need to add it as payload root so we need to add the payload root annotation in order to define the namespace from which we can retrieve the data so we need to provide a namespace um, value so this namespace value is the same value which we provided uh, in the xsd so let's or we can even use any unique value which we are going to define so i'll use reuse the same thing which we uh, did there so let's go to the user here and this is the target namespace so we are going to copy this and add the same namespace here so this is the namespace with which uh, spring web services is going to identify this is my particular request or the service and we need to add the uh, type of request so, the, so this is defined as a part of local part we'll be mentioning it as get user request because that is what we had defined in the xst right so you can notice that here the get user request is what is the name of the payload so that is the payload which the services are expecting so we will be using that along with that we need to send the response so we'll just mark this as a response payload we need to mar uh, mark this because we need to convert this into a soap request so this get user response will automatically get converted into a soap message type when we annotate it with add response payload so our uh, endpoint is set only thing is yeah we need to get the name right we have marked it here now using the request payload we need to receive the object so we'll just mark it as request payload and the object would be a uh, get user request i'll just say request from the request we can directly get the name get name yeah so since it is of type get user request we will be getting that the request will be of type soap message uh, we already created this as a part of the uh, xsd and we'll be using the get name from that and we are providing it to the service we are retrieving the user from that and setting that to the response back so response is now sent back to the user when they trigger it now we need to get the service up and working we have created the uh, endpoint we have created the service with which we can retrieve now we need to configure the web service in order to tell spring boot that boot up this web service initially so let's create a config package and we need to provide some config data in order to make spring boot seamlessly work with the soap web service so let's call this as a, a soap web service config and this is the configuration so we'll annotate it with add configuration so that spring boot can auto wire during the startup and we need to enable the enable web services because this is a web services project note that web services is different from spring mvc we need to extend the um, configuration adapter so it's called configurer adapter so the web service configurer adapter is what we are extending we need to override some stuff so that spring boot can connect our application so in order to um, make the web service start at a particular option we need to override the service registration bean so we need to override the message dispatcher servlet where we can add the uh, wsdl location and we can add the um, servlet registration bean into that so we need to add a servlet registration bean so this is to register our application during the startup with a particular path so we'll just call it as message dispatch uh, servlet 
and the application context is what we require because that is where we will be using in the disk in the dispatch uh, message dispatch servlet so we'll just use the message dispatch uh, servlet we'll create a new object here we need to provide an application context we are just reusing the application context and providing it we are not changing anything to the application context since we create the message dispatch servlet we need to provide a application context to the message dispatch servlet and we are not going to change that and we are going to allow Spring Boot to take care of that. So we'll just pass the same application context to the message dispatcher servlet. The only thing we need to uh, set is the transformation object where the WHDL locations will be set. So we'll just say true and we need to provide this particular path where our application is going to be started. So this, this will automatically add a WSDL file onto the web service and we will just mention where I, our application should be, should be started. So let's create a servlet registration bean and we need to provide this message dispatcher servlet along with the uh, path where we want to have. So we'll just mark it as soap WS or uh, how do we want it so we can mark even uh, yeah I'll just mark it as soap web service. So notice that what we have here is we have created a new instance or we have just overridden the servlet registration bean with our custom message dispatcher servlet which just has the transformation of WSDLs enabled the locations basically and we have provided the path. The next one is uh, the XML schema. So we let's create the bean for loading the XML schema basically the XSD schema. So there is an object called XSD schema implementation. Uh, it's a user schema, right? So we'll just say user schema. We need to create a new simple XSD schema. We can use the class resource, class path resource and provide the file name here. It's called users.xsd. This particular XSD will be loaded into the XSD schema. We need to do a return. The next one is adding these WSDL uh, definitions to the Spring Boot application. So let's do that. So there is a class called default WSDL 11 definition. So this is the definition used by, if you notice here, this is used by Spring Framework. So we need to override that and provide our necessary details where our application should be coming up and where our servlet needs to be registered. Let's create that. We need to get the schema definition, so I'll just inject this guy. We need to create the default definition, so I'll just say definition. We need to set the schema. the user schema and then we can set the location where we need to bring our service up so we'll use the same location as the um, WSDL location where our uh, WSDL file will be shown up so we'll be using the same so we'll just say soap slash slash soap uh, WS so this is the same location where our um, XSD files will be hosted as well basically the WSDL files the next one is setting the um, port type name we just need to add a, a type of service so since this is a, a user service right so I'll just name it as user service and finally we need to set the uh, namespace we need to set the uh, target namespace let's add a add the same URL where we have added it, added here. So this is the target namespace which we are going to hit with this, with this particular location. And let's return the default definition. So we have created our uh, configuration. What we have done here is we have set the WSDL definition saying this is the path with which our 
schema needs to be used this is the schema we have created the schema from the users.xsd that schema has been loaded onto the definition and it is going to expect the definition in this particular url we have just added this particular uh, definition a uh, name we have added the uh, port type name as uh, user service we can even add it as user service port so that we know it's a port and the target namespace we have just defined as the same namespace which we have defined in the endpoint so i think our configurations are done i need to override the uh, port in which this particular application is going to come up because i already have uh, 8080 uh, occupied so i'll just use uh, server port 8091 because i don't have 8080 dedicated so that's it apart from that we don't uh, need anything else hopefully uh, let's bring the spring boot application up also i have uh, postman running here so let's use postman to trigger the uh, soap request meanwhile we need to create the soap request right so we had the users.xsd we need to have the access uh, we need to have the soap request the request xml which we need to provide to the uh, web service so let's create that now i'll just create it here so that i'll commit it into github and you can take it users request the uh, soap request should be soap hyphen uh, soap env let's say i'll just say soap environment and i'll just mark it as and this is an envelope right so we need to create the soap envelope i'll just say xml namespace colon soap envelope and i need to provide a namespace here so it will be schemas this is the schema envelopes uh, namespace and we are using the same thing uh, let's provide one more xml ns uh, we need to add the namespace of our service as well so let's name it as uh, user service so us and we need to add the same path what we added here so i think that's it so we have the soap envelope ready and uh, let's add the soap envelope colon header there is no header as such so i'll just make the header as empty so i'll just add an empty header we need the body message so i'll just add the soap env body so the body needs to have the request of the get user request from the xsd so we will use the same thing here and we named it as us right user request so we'll just pass it as user request dot uh, get user request and the name should be provided so it automatically suggested that there is a us dot name and we will provide that name as sam right so this us is a namespace which we uh, added in the users dot xsd that's how it identified that i have a get users request and for that we need to provide a name so this is the soap request which we need to request uh, so let's trigger this guy now from the soap see that the server is up yeah so the spring boot application is up here on 8091 port let's use the same here http colon double slash local host colon 8091 and the server is now up under the endpoint slash soap ws that's what we have defined there i'll just say slap soap slash ws so now we need to provide the header so the header is of content type xml right so i'll just provide it as text slash xml and the message we need to pass so it, let's pass it as a post because this is uh, this postman ui is for uh, rest but we can reuse that by just using a post here because we need to pass the message to the uh, web service and we can reuse the post of the rest option and we can pass the message here see i have just pasted the soap request which we need to pass to the soap web service and the header has been set uh, as text as xml xml i think it should be okay let's try triggering it so what does this say the namespace uh, soap version unable to create an envelope to given because uh, namespace was not recognized so there is a problem with the namespace i think we have to 
have a different namespace let's check what happened so it says so ponder unable to create uh, unable to create an envelope given the source because the namespace was not recognized okay let's go to the user request and see what we did wrongly okay i think there is a problem here in the soap environment so let's check if this is correct yeah it is a valid soap uh, schema i don't know why this is getting errored uri is not xml namespace and soap environment i think that's it what else do i need to provide i think i have to provide a slash here is that the reason yeah so the looks like that was the problem slash was the problem that was unfortunate but yeah so if you notice here the response came in as um, soap and moment header nothing was there in the header and in the body we have the schema definition what was the schema of that particular WSDL namespace of that particular namespace and we see that the name is written the employee is returned and the salary is also returned with a get user response so let's try changing it into peter we should be getting the value of peter as well yep we see the value of peter as well and we can see the ryan's value as well that is how we can use spring boot to create a web service using soap so i'll just summarize what we did so we created a configuration we need to override the web service configure adapter in order to have some configurations created for our project customly we have overridden the message dispatcher servlet so we are going to use the servlet registration bean and create a message dispatcher servlet with the transformation of wsdl location as true and we have just passed this particular path so that the wsds can be hosted in this particular path then we have created the xsd schema we just um, loaded this particular schema from the class path resource and we need to use this inside the default definition which we are overriding to provide the URI so this is the URI with which we will be hitting and we have provided the target namespace with which we will be uh, Responding it responding to the user. So that is what we have done here We have just provided the target namespace and the location URI location and the port type name The next thing which we created was the endpoint the endpoint has been created We need to provide the namespace for the payload. So this is the payload route We provided the namespace what type of request it will be receiving and it is called as get user request that particular request has been added as a request payload and will be responding with a response payload of type get users response and we are using the user service to retrieve the value from the cache we are just creating a users hash map and this match map will be loaded in the start of the application because we have added a as add post construct here so using the get users we retrieve the uh, name from the hash map and we are returning it back to the user and i have added the request whatever we sent uh, the request xml has been added in the uh, under the resources path the user request is added here so you can take a look and users.xsd is the schema definition which we are using in the web service so this is how you can create a spring boot application using soap using spring web services i hope you guys understood if you have any questions do let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a video on any specific topic do let me know that as well if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much